we've got this here. Um, I basically took a pasture renovator and subsoiled it down about eight or 10 inches. Now that we've got the whole field done that way, I'm kind of doing it to let it dry out a little bit before I actually begin to get it ready to plant. But the thing now is I've got all these little V's across here. I'm going to run in here. I've got the uh, lime spreader on the back of the ranger. Uh, and my soil sample said I needed a certain amount of lime, but to do it in two year, uh, a two-year interval, half last year and half this year. So we're going to go ahead and put the half in now so we can get the lime activated before we go to actually till it and then get it ready to plant. Hello everybody, it's Danny Wanda back from Pecan Grove. We're getting ready to plant our Danny corn out here. And um, we are in the process of preparing the ground. Okay, now that we've got, um, for those of you who are wondering, I put 240 pounds of dolomic lime on the field, which was uh, half as much as I needed. I put that much last year and I'm putting that much again this year. And those of you who don't realize, when you don't lime your fields and get your pH where it needs to be, I don't care how much fertilizer you put on it, you're just wasting your money because it will not take up the, uh, the fertilizer. It will not utilize it whenever you do it. So you need to be able to make sure that you have it, uh, the pH of the soil exactly right whenever you do it. So that's something you want to keep in mind when you're doing this. Now, next, the next part of this project I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be coming in and I'm gonna be tilling it now. Guys, we, uh, we just finished uh, section hairing. That's what this is on the back of the tractor. This is a giant section hair. It's made to level land, bust up dirt clods, drag out trash, all kinds of stuff, and just make the ground really presentable for being able to plant. 
And that's what we just did to the field out here. We just ran over it and kind of pulverized up everything up, knocked up all the little dirt clods and got it ready now for the old cub farm all. Come in here and make the rows and plant the corn. Well, good morning, everybody. Danny Wanda back from Pecan Grove. Guys, today is the day. Uh, weather says we don't have any more freezing temps coming, but they do tell us that we got some drought coming this year. Last year, I took a jump and I was successful at it. I've got an early start. This year, I'm going even earlier, way earlier, and planting my Danny corn. Uh, we got the, the fields out here all ready. Uh, today, let me just do this. Last year I didn't do this. Today is February the 21st. I have never in my life planted corn, field corn, in February. I've never done it before. So this is my first year. I may get bit, but if I do, all the weather people's wrong. So, um, everything's starting to bud and pop here. I mean, blooming out. So I'm going to take a chance on getting it done. Now, the old pasture back here, behind the barn back through here, was nothing, it was an old field. About uh, 25, 30 years ago, the gentleman that owned this had corn planted back there, and when he quit planting corn and got rid of his cows, it all growed up in woods and stuff like that. And we got a, I'll, I'll put a video up here in the in the corner here, if you wanna go look at us clearing it with a track hoe and uh, my uh, flat breaking it and tilling it and you know subsoiling it and all that kind of stuff and getting it ready for planting Danny corn last year. Last year was a tremendous success with Danny corn. This year, we're hoping to have the same results. And we are gonna be using the old cub planter here and tractor. Uh, I, it's either a 174 or 172. I don't remember which, I had to go back at my book and look. It was sold to me for one, and when I realized I started putting it together, I realized I had the other, and I had to go get another book. Uh, some gracious subscribers, Mr. Tom uh, sent me uh, some seed plates, and uh, I am so grateful for that because I'm going to be using one of them today. It's a 16-hole plate, and we're going to see uh, we're going to see how that does. I'm going to take it out here and see if I can experiment in a before I take it to the field and see how far it's putting the seeds apart on the ground. You know, with these old farm malls, you want to make sure they're in neutral, which this one is. That grease is heavy this morning because it's cold. I can tell the lever usually just flops. It's pretty heavy this morning. And, uh, you know, the old tractors didn't have a key. This one I put a toggle switch on. I put a real heavy-duty toggle switch on. Pop it over. And this is the old choke. And we're going to see if this baby will fire off. This is, the, this is how you crank it.
came out here uh, in some dry ground. I dropped my plow down to just kind of test right here. Uh, we got, looks like about every 16 to 18 inches down through here is putting out seed. That's exactly what I want with Danny corn. Guys, what I'm looking for is I have to make sure there are no clumps in this and kind of the planter. I mean the fertilizer. It looks like it's a pretty good bag. Dynamic plant food. Yes, I use commercial fertilizer on this big field of corn. They look they were good and plump. They look good. These are summer squash. These are the straight neck from So Right Seeds. 
And we're going to be doing a, a giveaway. We'll put a link in a pinned comment. Now, I can't tell you at this moment if they're, I know they're, uh, non -GMO. I know they're non-GMO, uh, but I can't tell you if they're a hybrid or a, uh, or a heirloom. This is next to the corn, you know, the three sisters thing, they say animals don't like going through squash, so we're going to see. Let's see how it works out. Well, we are back out again this morning. Uh, we have got the Danny corn field all planted here, guys. Now, let me explain a little bit about planting a field of corn. Now, this and it, it can it can work on smaller patches too. Just because you plant it, that don't mean something's going to happen because uh, you got a lot of you got a lot of variables against you. One, squirrels. Squirrels will come and dig the seeds up. Two, crows. Crows will come along when it gets up about that tall and they'll peck the corn up and eat the kernel underneath it. Especially when it's not treated seeds and it's just good heirloom seeds like these. And thirdly, once it gets up and gets to going about yay high, the deer will come in and just mow it down. So we are actively, we've learned by doing this each year and using different color ribbons that uh, it keeps the crows predominantly from messing with anything. Uh, squirrels usually won't mess with it. The deer seems to be right now the number one factor. We do have some devices that we've ordered and they're coming. Uh, we'll share those with you when we get them to see how well they deter the deer. Now we've tried, we have the seven foot high uh, grower solutions deer fencing around it except for this end and the other end because I have to get in and out of here with a tractor so we have to take it down and we have it rolled back to the side over here out of the way right now and I hate to just keep putting it up taking it down putting it up taking it down so that's why we're going with some solar devices to see if if they will work on these ends and the sides to prevent the deer from even wanting to come in now up until last night, even when I had this field dissed, tilled, section haired, subsoil and everything, the deer were coming in every night. Last night was the first night when we put the ribbons in here, they did not come in. But does that mean that they're going to continue to not come in? No. What it just simply means is until they get used to it, once they get used to it and realize it's not going to harm them, they'll come back. And that's why we have these devices that we have coming that hopefully that will deter them from coming in here anymore. Now, another thing you might want to take into consideration is that once the corn gets up about waist high, the uh, army worms or the corn worms will hit it. Now, last year we had, uh, we had an infestation last year when it got up about this tall and this is where diligence comes in. You have to do this because one and I would come in here every morning last year and we walked every row and checked every stalk. And if we saw where a worm was starting to eat in the top of it, we would start mashing the stalk until we heard the worm pop in it. We did that every day for weeks until we stopped the infestation and the corn got up to where it was big. And if you guys watched us last year, you'll know we had a fantastic bumper crop of Danny corn last year. I mean, some of the best we've grown in years. So you have to keep that in, in mind. And a lot of folks are going to ask about the silkworm. There's a lot of different things. You can use spinosad, you can use mineral oil, you can use BT, uh, Bercellius thuringiensis. There's lots of things that you can use uh, to do that. And then you think, you know, well, we get past the silkworms and we got a nice ear of corn starting off here that we are, we're home free. Well, guess what? When it gets into the milk stage, that's when your 
raccoons and your possums and only God knows what else that comes after it, you know. And they start just climbing up foxes, uh, skunks. They'll all climb up on the stalks, knock them down, and eat it in the milk state. Even house cats. I've, I actually found some house cats here last year eating some of mine. But they'll, they'll get up in there and they'll tear it down. And then you think once we get it past the milk stage and it starts drying, you think, man, finally we're home free. Nope. The raccoons love it more and possums love it more even when it's dry. And then is when the deer come in. And hogs and crows and blue jays and all these other critters want to come in and then attack it once it starts drying. And that's where you've just got to be diligent. You've got to be proactive you can't wait till you see the damage uh last year we didn't realize we was even having any damage until uh wanda's son flew a drone over the cornfield and right out in the middle the corn stalks were all tore down in the middle of the field out here and i walked out there in it and the raccoons had went out in the middle of the field so every night i had to be up anywhere from nine o'clock till after midnight coming up here periodically to see if I could catch the raccoons, and I actually eradicated four of them out of the field last year, and two possums before I actually got it under control. So you, you've got to be proactive. You, you gotta be up during the day. You gotta be up at night. I mean, if you're gonna grow this stuff and you're gonna have it, we live in a place where nothing has taken care of the wildlife for the last 30 years out here, and there's just plenty of it to go around. So we have to, if we're going to grow our food, we have to bring it into, into moderation. Now that we're at this point, a lot of you is going to ask a question who don't watch us on a regular basis, or if you're a new subscriber, and please subscribe, because guys, if you don't subscribe, you're not going to know what we're doing, because YouTube had a shadow ban. You're not going to get any notifications. You've got to hit that notification bell, and you got to look for us. But let me explain a little bit about, you keep hearing me talk about Danny corn. Danny corn is a corn I created uh, through breeding, through a breeding process, probably been over 30 years now, uh, I've created an open pollinated variety. I don't think it's old enough to be called an heirloom yet, but it's an open pollinated variety that comes back true to itself every year. It's fantastic for feed. It's fantastic for cornmeal. It's fantastic for grits, corn flour, stuff like that. It, it'll work for all of it. And that's why I created it was because years ago I was in the cattle business just like I am now and the corn was really hard on the cow's teeth because it was so hard back then. That was before the 90s. And guys, it's even worse now. So I try to keep this to keep my animals fed with good grain as much as possible. Little things, things are a little bit different this year. You know, I mean, last year we had a uh, we had potatoes and peas and onions and garlic and all that stuff on this end over here, uh, pineapples and a row of blueberry bushes. That, and, um, and I needed to lime this field real heavy and I, you can't do that with blueberries. So this winter we came in and we dug all the blueberries up out of the field and we replanted them elsewhere on the property uh, where we can better take care of them. And now the whole field this year is gonna be nothing but the Danny corn we're not going to have any other vegetables in here other than right over here on this one outside edge i had a row because i didn't get the field perfectly square when i laid these posts off i got about half a row right here that i fertilized with the cub with no corn seeds in it and we planted straight neck squash seeds from so right seeds now this is going to be one of these kickers, guys. We're going to, uh, uh, so right, let's put it this way, not us, but so right is going to be blessing someone with some seeds. Now, we have three people that's going to be chosen to be blessed with some seeds. In this particular video, there's going to be a link down below, and there's going to be a pinned comment. They're going to be choosing from the ones who go to those and leave their email, and they're going to choose three people to send some seeds from. So I want you to be a subscriber, and I want you to go down to the description in the link and go to the one that's pinned comments and get your name in there so that you can be one of the three people that So Right Seed is going to bless with some seeds now. So, so before we get out of here, let me just say this. Uh, you guys, 
uh, subscribe to us. And if you like our content, hit that notification bell so that maybe YouTube will understand that we're putting some pretty good content out there. And watch the Saturday Night Live because there's going to be some special things happening on the Saturday Night Live that you don't want to miss. We might bless somebody with something. So join us for the Saturday Night Live. Thank you guys from Pecan Grove.